Access your free language gifts of the month right now. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the Life Events Conversation Cheat Sheet. If you're a language learner, then this is the most important resource you can have. You'll learn to talk about your life and major life events, birth, graduation, getting a job, marriage, and much more in your target language. Second, all the words and phrases you must know about food. Learn the most common words and phrases for fruits, drinks, flavors, cooking, and more with this new PDF. Download it now for free. Third, 20 must-know small talk phrases. With this bonus, you'll be able to have small talk in your target language. You'll learn phrases like, how are things? I haven't seen you in ages, and much more. Fourth, do you know how to say summer in your target language? If you don't, you'll want this essential summer vocabulary bonus. This one minute lesson is perfect for beginners. Fifth, how to say you dislike something. With this next bonus, you'll learn useful phrases like, I don't like this idea, I hate this, and much more. Sixth, free audiobooks. Unlock our huge library of language learning audiobooks. Save them to any device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master a language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get 35% off Premium or Premium Plus with the Power Up sale. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the lesson description below. Download them right now before they expire. Mano. Hand. Mano. Mano. Hand. Mano destra. Right hand. Mano destra. Braccio. Arm. Braccio. Braccio. Arm. Due braccia. Two arms. Due braccia. Piede. Foot. Piede. Piede. Foot. Piede destro. Right foot. Piede destro. Gamba. Leg. Gamba. Gamba. Leg. Gambe lunghe. Long legs. Gambe lunghe. Dito. Finger. Dito. Dito. Finger. Cinque dita. Five fingers. Cinque dita. Schiena. Back. Schiena. Schiena. Mi fa male la schiena. My back hurts. Mi fa male la schiena. Stomaco. Stomac. Stomaco. Stomaco. Stomac. Mal di stomaco. Stomach pain. Mal di stomaco. Petto. Chest. Petto. Petto. Chest. Ho un dolore al petto. I have chest pains. Ho un dolore al petto gennaio january gennaio gennaio january gennaio 2009 
January 2009. Gennaio 2009. Febbraio. February. Febbraio. Febbraio. February. Il 29 febbraio. On February 29th. Il 29 febbraio. Marzo. March. Marzo. Marzo. March. Il 17 marzo. On March 17th. Il 17 marzo. Aprile. April. Aprile. Aprile. April. Le piogge d'aprile portano il biancospino. April showers bring May flowers. Le piogge d'aprile portano il biancospino. Maggio. May. Maggio. Maggio. May. Ora è aprile, quindi il mese prossimo sarà maggio. It is now April, so next month will be May. Ora è aprile, quindi il mese prossimo sarà maggio. Giugno. June. Giugno. Giugno. June. Il matrimonio in giugno. June wedding. Il matrimonio in giugno. Luglio. July. Luglio. Luglio. July. Luglio è uno dei sette mesi con 31 giorni. July is one of seven months with 31 days. Luglio è uno dei sette mesi con 31 giorni. Agosto. August. Agosto. Agosto. August. Un caldo giorno d'agosto. A hot August day. Un caldo giorno d'agosto. Settembre. September. Settembre. Settembre. September. Il primo settembre. September first. Il primo settembre. Ottobre. October. Ottobre. Ottobre. October. Il 13 ottobre. On October 13. Il 13 ottobre. Novembre. November. Novembre. Novembre. November. 
il 24 novembre. On November 24th. Il 24 novembre. Dicembre. December. Dicembre. Dicembre. December. Il 25 dicembre. On December 25th. Il 25 dicembre. Orologio. What? Orologio. Orologio. What? Vorrei incidere questo orologio. I'd like to etch this watch. Vorrei incidere questo orologio. Occhiali. Glasses. Occhiali. Occhiali. Glasses. Antonio porta gli occhiali. Antonio wears glasses. Antonio porta gli occhiali. Giacca. Jacket. Giacca. Giacca. Jacket. Posso togliere la mia giacca? Can I take off my jacket? Posso togliere la mia giacca? Ricevere. Receive. Ricevere. Ricevere. Receive. Tutti i bambini si aspettano di ricevere una console per videogiochi. All kids expect to receive a game console. Tutti i bambini si aspettano di ricevere una console per videogiochi. Cercare. Search. Cercare. Cercare. Search. La scienziata cerca le formiche. The scientist searches for ants. La scienziata cerca le formiche. Prendere. Take. Prendere. Prendere. Take. Prendere un pullman. To take a bus. Prendere un pullman. Debole. Weak. Debole. Debole. Weak. La nonna si sentiva debole dopo la lunga passeggiata. Granny felt weak after the long walk. La nonna si sentiva debole dopo la lunga passeggiata. Forte. Strong. Forte. Forte. Strong. Ieri sera c'è stato un forte temporale. Yesterday evening there was a strong thunderstorm. Ieri sera c'è stato un forte temporale. 
freddo. Cold. Freddo. Freddo. Cold. Il vento è freddo. The wind is cold. Il vento è freddo. Caldo. Hot. Caldo. Caldo. Hot. Oggi fa proprio caldo. Già. Today is really hot. Yeah, indeed. Oggi fa proprio caldo. Già. Divertente. Funny. Divertente. Divertente. Funny. Questo libro è abbastanza divertente. This book is pretty funny. Questo libro è abbastanza divertente. Pesca. Peach. Pesca. Pesca. Peach. Ho mangiato una pesca. I hate a peach. Ho mangiato una pesca. Arancia. Orange. Arancia. Arancia. Orange. Sto tagliando un'arancia. I'm cutting an orange. Sto tagliando un'arancia. Patata. Potato. Patata. Patata. Potato. Come ultimo ingrediente ci serve una patata. At last ingredient we need a potato. Come ultimo ingrediente ci serve una patata. Fagiolo di soia. Soy bean. Fagiolo di soia. Fagiolo di soia. Soy bean. Un fagiolo di soia è un tipo di fagiolo. A soy bean is a kind of bean. Un fagiolo di soia è un tipo di fagiolo. Verdura. Vegetable. Verdura. Verdura. Vegetable. Ogni tanto mangio le verdure. Sometimes I eat a vegetable. Ogni tanto mangio le verdure. Mucca. Cow. Mucca. Mucca. Cow. Le mucche stanno pascolando nel campo. The cows are grazing in the field. Le mucche stanno pascolando nel campo. Maiale. Pig. Maiale. Maiale. Pig. Vorrei allevare un maiale. I'd like to raise a pig. 
vorrei allevare un maiale. Cavallo. Horse. Cavallo. Cavallo. Horse. Il cavallo sta correndo nel campo. The horse is running in the field. Il cavallo sta correndo nel campo. Neve. Snow. Neve. Neve. Snow. Giochiamo nella neve. Let's play in the snow. Giochiamo nella neve. Camicia. Shirt. Camicia. Camicia. Shirt. Sto lavando la camicia. I'm washing the shirt. Sto lavando la camicia. Pantaloni. Pants. Pantaloni. Pantaloni. Pants. I pantaloni sono lunghi. The pants are long. I pantaloni sono lunghi. Vestito. Dress. Vestito. Vestito. Dress. Guarda il mio nuovo vestito. Look at my new dress. Guarda il mio nuovo vestito. Dire. Sei. Dire. Dire. Sei. Non dire una parola. Don't say a word. Non dire una parola. Chiamare. Call. Chiamare. Chiamare. Call. Devo chiamare un avvocato. I have to call a lawyer. Devo chiamare un avvocato. Trovare. Find. Trovare. Trovare. Find. Dobbiamo trovare una via di fuga. We must find an escape route. Dobbiamo trovare una via di fuga. Pulire. Clean. Pulire. Pulire. Clean. L'asciugamano non è pulito. The towel is not clean. L'asciugamano non è pulito. Sporco. Dirty. Sporco. Sporco. Dirty. Il piatto è sporco. The plate is dirty. Il piatto è sporco. Carota. Carrot. Carota. Carota. Carrot. 
Il dottore consiglia di mangiare una carota ogni due giorni. The doctor suggests eating a carrot every two days. Il dottore consiglia di mangiare una carota ogni due giorni. Cipolla. Onion. Cipolla. Cipolla. Onion. La cipolla dà sapore a ogni piatto. Onion gives flavor to any dish. La cipolla dà sapore a ogni piatto. Lattuga. Lettuce. Lattuga. Lattuga. Lettuce. Vorrei una lattuga e due carote. I'd like one lettuce and two carrots. Vorrei una lattuga e due carote. Pecora. Sheep. Pecora. Pecora. Sheep. Abbiamo smarrito una pecora. We lost a sheep. Abbiamo smarrito una pecora. Coniglio. Rabbit. Coniglio. Coniglio. Rabbit. Il coniglio marrone sta mangiando delle foglie in giardino. The brown rabbit is eating leaves in the garden. Il coniglio marrone sta mangiando delle foglie in giardino. Foca. Seal. Foca. Foca. Seal. La foca sta facendo girare l'ula hop. The seal is spinning hula hoops. La foca sta facendo girare l'ula hop. Nuvola. Cloud. Nuvola. Nuvola. Cloud. Quella nuvola è rosa. That cloud is pink. Quella nuvola è rosa. Sereno. Sunny. Sereno. Sereno. Sunny. Oggi il tempo è sereno. Today the weather is clear. Oggi il tempo è sereno. Piovoso. Rainy. Piovoso. Piovoso. Rainy. In Italia marzo è sempre un mese piovoso. In Italy March is always a rainy month. In Italia, marzo è sempre un mese piovoso. Bambino. Baby. Bambino. Bambino. Baby. Che bel bambino! What a nice baby! Che bel bambino! Bambina! 
girl, bambina, bambina, girl. La bambina sta per dormire. The girl is about to sleep. La bambina sta per dormire. Bambino. Boy. Bambino. Bambino. Boy. È un bambino testardo. He is a stubborn boy. È un bambino testardo. Contento. Happy. Contento. Contento. Happy. Sono contento che hai accettato l'invito. I am happy that you accepted the invitation. Sono contento che hai accettato l'invito. Triste. Sad. Triste. Triste. Sad. L'adolescente triste è seduto da solo. The sad teenager is sitting alone. L'adolescente triste è seduto da solo. Arrabbiato. Angry. Arrabbiato. Arrabbiato. Angry. Perché sei arrabbiato? Why are you angry? Perché sei arrabbiato? Abbigliamento. Clothing. Abbigliamento. Abbigliamento. Clothing. Lavoro nel campo dell'abbigliamento. I work in the clothing field. Lavoro nel campo dell'abbigliamento. Scarpa. Shoe. Scarpa. Scarpa. Shoe. Mentre correvo, ho perso una scarpa. I lost a shoe while I was running. Mentre correvo, ho perso una scarpa. Calza. Sock. Calza. Calza. Sock. Ho trovato una calza sul balcone. I found a sock on the balcony. Ho trovato una calza sul balcone. Biancheria intima. Underwear. Biancheria intima. Biancheria intima. Underwear. Le mie calze e la biancheria intima sono nel cassetto superiore del mio comò. My socks and underwear are in the top drawer of my dresser. Le mie calze e la biancheria intima sono nel cassetto superiore del mio comò. Parlare. Talk. Parlare. Parlare. Talk. Dobbiamo parlare. We need to talk. Dobbiamo parlare. Dare. Give. 
dare, dare, give. Mi potresti dare un po' d'acqua? Could you give me some water? Mi potresti dare un po' d'acqua? Basso. Low. Basso. Basso. Low. Il mio guadagno è relativamente basso in confronto a quello dei miei colleghi. My income is relatively low compared to my co-workers. Il mio guadagno è relativamente basso in confronto a quello dei miei colleghi. Alto. High. Alto. Alto. High. Il prezzo è un po' alto. The price is a little high. Il prezzo è un po' alto. Frutta. Fruit. Frutta. Frutta. Fruit. Quanto costa quel cesto di frutta? How much does that basket of fruit cost? Quanto costa quel cesto di frutta? Polpo. Octopus. Polpo. Polpo. Octopus. Il polpo sta nuotando nell'oceano. The octopus is swimming in the ocean. Il polpo sta nuotando nell'oceano. Pesce cane. Shark. Pesce cane. Pesce cane. Shark. Mentre notavo, ho visto un pesce cane. While I was swimming, I saw a shark. Mentre notavo, ho visto un pesce cane. Balena. Whale. Balena. Balena. Whale. Le balene sono mammiferi. Whales are mammals. Le balene sono mammiferi. Nuvoloso. Cloudy. Nuvoloso. Nuvoloso. Cloudy. Oggi è abbastanza nuvoloso. Today it's quite cloudy. Oggi è abbastanza nuvoloso. Fresco. Cool. Fresco. Fresco. Cool. Mi piace la birra fresca. I like cool beer. Mi piace la birra fresca. Cetriolo. Cocomber. Cetriolo. Cetriolo. Cocomber. Sto tagliando un cetriolo. I'm cutting a cucumber. Sto tagliando un cetriolo. Peperone. Bell pepper. Peperone. Peperone. Bell pepper. I più comuni peperoni sono verdi, rossi o gialli. The most common bell peppers are green, red or yellow. I più comuni peperoni sono verdi, 
rossi o gialli. Broccoli. 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 Dovresti mangiare dei broccoli. You should eat some broccoli. Dovresti mangiare dei broccoli. Banana. 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 Mi dai una banana? Can you give me a banana? Mi dai una banana? Mela. Apple. Mela. Mela. Apple. La mela è ammaccata. The apple is bruised. La mela è ammaccata. Uva. Grape. Uva. Uva. Grape. Lo spumante è ricavato dall'uva. Spumante is obtained from grapes. Lo spumante è ricavato dall'uva. Anguria. Watermelon. Anguria. Anguria. Watermelon. L'anguria in Italia è molto economica. Watermelon in Italy is very cheap. L'anguria in Italia è molto economica. Uccello. Bird. Uccello. Uccello. Bird. Sul ramo ci sono due piccoli uccellini. On the branch there are two small birds. Sul ramo ci sono due piccoli uccellini. Topo. Mouse. Topo. Topo. Mouse. Il gatto mangia il topo. The cat eats the mouse. Il gatto mangia il topo. Sole. Sun. Sole. Sole. Sun. Il sole sta tramontando. The sun is setting. Il sole sta tramontando. Tempo. Weather. Tempo. Tempo. Weather. Il tempo è bello oggi. The weather is nice today. Il tempo è bello oggi. Grado. Degree. Grado. Grado. Degree. Un grado Celsius corrisponde a 33,8 gradi Fahrenheit. One degree Celsius corresponds to 33,8 degrees Fahrenheit. Un grado Celsius corrisponde a 33,8 gradi Fahrenheit. Donna. Woman. Donna. Donna. Woman. Che donna affascinante. What a fascinating woman. Che donna affascinante. Uomo. Man. Uomo. Uomo. 
Men. L'uomo prova il completo. The man tries on the suits. L'uomo prova il completo. Ragazza. Girlfriend. Ragazza. Ragazza. Girlfriend. La mia ragazza è una designer. My girlfriend is a designer. La mia ragazza è una designer. Ragazzo. Boyfriend. Ragazzo. Ragazzo. Boyfriend. Ami il tuo ragazzo? Do you love your boyfriend? Ami il tuo ragazzo? Treno. Train. Treno. Treno. Train. A che ora c'è l'ultimo treno? What time is the last train? A che ora c'è l'ultimo treno? Aereo. Airplane. Aereo. Aereo. Airplane. I passeggeri stanno volando sull'aereo. The passengers are flying on the airplane. I passeggeri stanno volando sull'aereo. Autobus. Bus. Autobus. Autobus. Bus. Hai preso l'autobus per tornare a casa? Did you take the bus to come back home? Hai preso l'autobus per tornare a casa? Taxi. 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 Dove si trova il parcheggio per taxi più vicino? Where is located the nearest parking lot for taxis? Dove si trova il parcheggio per taxi più vicino? Spinaci. Spinach. Spinaci. Spinaci. Spinach. Come contorno preparerò degli spinaci. As a side dish, I'll prepare some spinach. Come contorno preparerò degli spinaci. Delfino. Dolphin. Delfino. Delfino. Dolphin. Il delfino sta nuotando nell'oceano. The dolphin is swimming in the ocean. Il delfino sta nuotando nell'oceano. Calamaro. Squid. Calamaro. Calamaro. Squid. Il calamaro gigante vive in fondo agli oceani. The giant squid lives at the bottom of the oceans. Il calamaro gigante vive in fondo agli oceani. Want to speak real Italian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at italianpod101.com. Hi everyone, welcome back to Italian Pod 101. My name is Daisy. Mi chiamo Daisy. Mi chiamo Daisy. And in this video we're going to talk about a real really really important Italian verb. Fare to do or to make. Fare. Fare. As I said already, this is a very important verb because we use it to express the idea of making, of doing something, but way more than the actual do to do verb in English. Okay? First of all, let's say that it's an irregular verb and it goes like this. 
Io faccio, tu fai, lui fa, noi facciamo, voi fate. Be careful here because voi facete is a really, really common mistake. Voi fate, loro fanno. Io faccio, tu fai, lui fa, noi facciamo, voi fate, loro fanno. That being said, let's look at some expressions together. It is used with weather. So, it is called fa freddo. Impersonal use, so there is no actual subject, just the verb. Third person singular, fa freddo. It's cold. It does cold. It makes cold, literally. Fa freddo or fa caldo. It's hot. And even just to ask about weather. Che tempo fa lì? How's the weather over there? So, it's used with weather expressions, but also with meals. I know it's basically unrelated, but we use the verb fare with a lot of things. And meals are, as you know, very important for Italians, so you better know these expressions too. For example, faccio colazione alle otto. I have breakfast at 8. A che ora fai pranzo? What time do you have lunch? A che ora fai pranzo? Domani facciamo cena insieme? Tomorrow. Will we have dinner together? Let's have dinner together tomorrow. Facciamo cena. Also related to eating and <laughs> the expression Fare da mangiare. So, to make something to eat. Also known as to cook. Cucinare, right? <laughs> but it's as common as cucinare. Actually, I would say even more. Venerdì sera faccio da mangiare io. Friday night I'll cook. It's not true. I'm not a good cook. <laughs> General temporal expressions too are something that we express through the verb fare. For example, faccio tardi. I'm late. I'm calling you. Scusa, stasera faccio tardi. I'm sorry, tonight I'm late. On the contrary, fare in fretta. Faccio più in fretta che posso. I'll be the quickest as I can be. Fare più in fretta possibile. So, make it as quick as possible. Fare in fretta. Fare tardi. To be late. And like this, fare is used in place of many, many other verbs. Of course, you can use the proper one, but fare is the most common one, so be ready to hear that a lot. For example, you can either say comprare un biglietto, so to buy a ticket, but we also say fare il biglietto, fare un biglietto. So, you make it, basically. <laughs> fare il biglietto. Ho fatto il biglietto per il treno delle cinque. I got the ticket for the train at five. Ho fatto il biglietto. Past form of fare. Fatto. Ho fatto il biglietto. Ho fatto una foto. I took a picture. Take a picture, it's supposed to be scattare una foto, but believe me, fare una foto is way more common. Ho fatto una foto al gatto. I took a picture of the cat. Dai, facciamo una foto. Come on, let's take a picture. Facciamo una foto. Some others include fare un viaggio, to take a trip. Fare una domanda, to have a question. Or fare la spesa, just go for groceries. Fare la fila, or la coda. So, to queue in a line. Also, fare la valigia, to pack. Of course, you're not making the luggage itself, you're putting things into, right? I'd say that most of times it's kind of like to have or to take, like to have lunch, fare pranzo, or take a picture, fare una foto, but even more than that. So, remember as many as you can and be ready to hear fare a lot. Let me know in the comments a che ora 
fate colazione di solito? What time do you usually have breakfast? A che ora fate colazione di solito? Grazie mille, thank you so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe if you haven't. And if you want to learn more expressions to use in your daily life in Italian, just click the link in the description and download our PDF lessons. I'll see you soon in the next video. Ciao ciao. Bye bye. Want to speak real Italian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at italianpod101.com. Hello everyone. Welcome back to Italian Pod 101. My name is Daisy. Mi chiamo Daisy. Mi chiamo Daisy. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through some common and useful expressions that you may use at the doctor. Hopefully, you will never need them, but better safe than sorry, right? Dal dottore. Dal dottore. First of all, there is the doctor, il dottore, or la dottoressa, if female, dottoressa. Medico can be used for both, so you're safe with that. Medico. Medico. The nurse is infermiere, if a man, infermiere, or infermiera, infermiera, if a woman. And you, you will be referred to as il paziente, il paziente, the patient, right? Or la paziente, if you are a woman. Now, that being said, Let's talk about symptoms. I sintomi. I sintomi. As in English, when you feel something, you have it, you possess it. So, avere sintomi. To have symptoms. Which may be, for example, il raffreddore. Raffreddore. From freddo. Raffreddore. A cold. To have a cold. Avere il raffreddore. Avere la febbre. To have a fever. La febbre. Febbre. Avere la tosse. Avere la tosse. To have a cough. <coughs> like this. Also, this may also turn into a verb. Tossire. Tossire. To cough. Tossire. If you already know that you have the flu, then you may just say that ho oh, l'influenza, ho oh, l'influenza, where influenza is flu, but more in general, and if you don't really know what you have and you don't know how to say that, just remember ho oh, male di, ho oh, male di, it hurts, male in this case means pain, Dolore, pain, dolore. O male di or al, depending on the preposition, we're gonna check that together too. Or mi fa male, il or la. Mi fa male, it hurts. O male di may be translated as I have something something ache. For example, o mal di testa. Ho mal di testa. I have a headache. While, if you say, mi fa male la testa, mi fa male la testa, my head hurts. That's the difference. But the meaning is the same. Still means that you are in pain. <laughs> okay? If it's not your head, it may be, mi fa male la pancia. I have a bellyache. A stomach ache. Mi fa male lo stomaco. O mal di stomaco. O mal di denti. Toothache. Denti. O mal di gola. Sore throat. O mal di gola. Gola. Throat. Mal d'orecchie. You can see. Mal d'orecchie. Ears. Orecchie. Or, mal di schiena, my back hurts, mal di schiena. And this is something that you may say in response to cosa ti fa male, 
What is hurting? Cosa ti fa male? Or cosa le fa male? If they're being polite to you. So you know that if they're asking that to you or che sintomi hai? What symptoms do you have? Che sintomi ha? And you can start and describe what you're feeling. Some other useful words that you may encounter once you've expressed what is hurting may be ricetta, ricetta. I know, it's the same word as recipe, but in this case it means prescription. Ricetta. We may specify that with ricetta medica, ricetta medica. So medical recipe, which is a prescription, I would say you can assume that from the context. Ricetta. So in Italy, you need la ricetta, the prescription, to go to la farmacia, the pharmacy, la farmacia, and buy the medicines. So le medicine, 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 not medicamenti. It may be understood anyway, but it's called medicine, medicines. Medicines that may come in the form of powder, in polvere, in polvere, powder, tablets, commonly referred to as pastiglie, pastiglie, or compresse, compresse. Then there are drops, let's say, Um, gocce, medicina in gocce, gocce, drops, or a syrup, sciroppo, sciroppo. And lastly, something that you want to be careful about is if you have to take those medicines a stomaco pieno or a stomaco vuoto. A stomaco pieno means with a full stomach, so after a meal, after eating, And a stomaco vuoto, it's on an empty stomach. Stomaco vuoto. Now, again, hoping that you will never need this, let me know in the comments if there's something in particular that you want to know. Thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Make sure to click the link in the description, download the PDF lessons, and learn many, many useful expressions for your daily life. I see you soon. Ciao, ciao. Bye-bye. Want to speak real Italian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at italianpod101.com. Hi everyone, welcome back to Italian Pod 101. My name is Daisy. Mi chiamo Daisy. Mi chiamo Daisy. And in this video we're going to talk about prepositions of movement. Preposizioni di movimento. Preposizioni di movimento. As you may know by now, prepositions in Italian are really tricky because the same word is used for many different cases, right? So instead of focusing on the preposition and studying all the different uses, because if I say, let's assume, vengo da Torino, I come from Turin, and una bottiglia da due litri, you see the word is the same, but of course the meaning is different. So let's work the other way around and start from the use. Of course, The condition to talk about prepositions of movement is a verb of movement in the phrase, right? Andare, to go, andare, venire, to come, venire, viaggiare, to travel, viaggiare, partire, partire, to leave, to depart, correre, to run, correre, Camminare, to walk, camminare, spostare, to move, literally, or mettere, to put. So you get the idea, <laughs> but these are the most common ones. Now, let's assume I want to say, I come from somewhere. Vengo da, venire da. Io vengo da Torino. I come from Turin. Io vengo dall'Italia. I come from Italy. And this preposition da can also mean to. Stasera vado da Michele. So you see that in this case vado means to go, not to come. 
Vengo da Torino. I come from Turin. Vado da Michele. I go to Michele. Even though it's da. That's why I said not to focus on the particle itself, but to start learning from the meaning and from what you want to say. So the particle da means both from and to, depending on the verb it comes with. Okay? Viaggio da Roma a Milano. I'm traveling from Rome to Milan. In treno, if you want to add by train, for example. Da a, from to. Corro da casa mia a casa di Michele. I run from my house to Michele's one. Da a. Now, this a means to, right? Vado a Milano. I go to Milan. So the action of movement to a place is expressed by the particle a. But sometimes we use the particle in, even though it still means that we're moving to that place. For example, vado in Giappone. I go to Japan. Viaggio in Europa. I travel to Europe. Just remember that when you want to express movement to some place, you use a, but when you're talking about countries, continents, big islands, and regions, you use in. Tu vai in Asia. You go to Asia, continent. Vado in Sicilia. I'm going to Sicily, big island. In Emilia Romagna, regions. Vado in Florida. I'm going to Florida. Lucky you. <laughs> so, yeah. Of course, in can also be used as a proper in or into. Metti il tavolo in cucina. Put the table in the kitchen. The literal movement of getting into some space, right? Another useful one would be verso. Verso. Il cane corre verso il padrone. The dog runs towards the owner. So in the direction of. Of course you can say in direzione, casa, but that's too long, so we just say verso casa. Similar to attraverso, which means through. Corro attraverso il parco. I'm running through the park. Of course, there are others and many other examples, but these are the most common ones. So we have da, from, a, to, sometimes in, also means to, in, <laughs> verso, towards, and through, attraverso. I have a question for you. Which is the longest journey you've been through? For example, il mio viaggio più lungo the longest trip, the longest journey, il tragitto più lungo, was e da Milano a Tokyo. From Milan to Tokyo. Let me know about yours in the comment. Remember to like and subscribe. And if you haven't done it yet, sign up for your free lifetime account on italianpod101.com and download the PDF lessons that will help you through your daily Italian life. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Ciao ciao. Want to speak real Italian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at italianpod101.com. Hi guys, welcome back to italianpod101.com. My name is Daisy and in this video we're going to talk about quantifiers. Indicatori di quantità. Indicatori di quantità. Quantifiers. As in English, there is difference between countable and uncountable nouns. So, for example, as in how much sugar do you want in your coffee? We say quanto zucchero vuoi nel caffè? Quanto zucchero? Quanto? So, quanto is like how much. Just be careful though, because in Italian it changes depending on the noun. So, even though the noun is uncountable, it still has a genre. So it could be male or female, male as in zucchero, so quanto zucchero. If it's female, like pasta, for example, quanta pasta. Quanta pasta mangi in una settimana, in one week, for example. 
If you're Italian, you would say a lot. <laughs> but we're gonna get there later. Quanto tempo abbiamo? How much time do we have? Quanto tempo abbiamo? Quanto tempo abbiamo? Because it's a question, so you want to change the intonation. Meanwhile, for countable names, we have quanti or quante. Because here too, it depends on the genre, right? Quanti is actually just the plural of quanto. So it all makes sense, right? Quanti cucchiaini di zucchero vuoi? So to take the same example as before, just with a different noun, not how much sugar, but how many spoons of sugar do you want in your coffee? Quanti cucchiaini di zucchero vuoi nel caffè? Quanti cucchiaini? While if I ask you quante sorelle hai? How many sisters do you have? Because sorella is female, so sorelle, the plural form, quante sorelle. And we covered the question. For the answer, let's assume you eat a lot of pasta, because you're Italian. So you say, mangio molta pasta. Mangio molta pasta. You see here too, molta ends with A, because pasta also ends with A. Mangio molta pasta. I eat a lot of pasta. Not countable, right? Uncountable. While mangio molte mele, I eat a lot of apples. And also, if you just want to say he eats a lot, you don't have to add anything. Lui mangia molto. Lui mangia molta pasta. Lui mangia molto zucchero. Molto. In the same way, you can also use tanto. Lui mangia tanto zucchero. Lui mangia tante mele. It's interchangeable. Molto and tanto, you can use it as you prefer. My tip is to use tanto because if you cannot pronounce molto in a perfect way, <laughs> you may be misunderstood and if you say morto, it means dead. So yeah, molto or tanto, a lot of. While if you want to say too much, so not only tanto, but too much, you don't say tanto, molto or molto tanto, it becomes troppo, troppo. Lui mangia troppe mele. He eats too many apples. Lui mangia troppa pasta. He eats too much pasta. Troppo. Another common one, enough, is abbastanza. Abbastanza. Enough. Quanto hai dormito? How much did you sleep? Abbastanza. Enough. Quante ore hai dormito? Enough. You don't have to go specific, so you, so you don't have to say how many hours you slept, you can just say enough, abbastanza. While when someone is giving you something, let's assume I'm filling your plate with pasta, because that's what we do, and if you don't want more than what I'm giving you already, you don't say abbastanza, I mean you can say abbastanza and we still understand what you're saying, but you say basta, like stop. But you see, the word is the same, basically. Basta is inside abbastanza, which means it's enough. Basta is also enough. But if you say that, like, basta, like that, it's kind of like, enough is enough. So just go with abbastanza when you're asked something, okay? <laughs> and going down and down with our quantity, if it's not troppo, so too much, or molto, a lot, or enough, abbastanza, then we have un po, which comes from un poco, which is a little, a few, for example. Do you want some wine? Vuoi del vino? Just a bit. Solo un po. Solo un poco. Solo is just, but you can also just say poco. A bit. Poco. And we usually do this. Poco. I'm a bit confused. Sono un po' confuso. I'm a bit confused. Un po' confuso. A bit confused. Quanti parenti hai in questa città? How many relatives do you have in this city? Pochi. A few. Pochi. A few. You can say un po' here too, but if you say pochi, you're referring to relatives. Pochi parenti. That's why it changes. 
same as molto that becomes molta with pasta, poco, for example, poco tempo, poca pasta. But if you go with un po', the short version, you don't have to change it. Quanto tempo usi per studiare l'italiano? How much time do you use to study Italian? Un po'. I know, you don't have to hide. <laughs> but I hope that this video could help you, even if solo un po', even if just a little. And if you want to learn even more, just click the link in the description, download our PDF lessons and learn how to have real Italian conversations with native speakers. Thank you again for watching. Remember to like and subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you soon. Ciao, ciao. Bye bye. Want to speak real Italian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at italianpod101.com. Hi guys, welcome back to italianpod101.com. My name is Desi, mi chiamo Desi, mi chiamo Desi. And in this video I'm going to teach you how to write a postcard in Italian. Scrivere una cartolina. Scrivere una cartolina. So first things first. Cartolina is postcard, cartolina, and francobollo, francobollo is the stamp that you need to send the cartolina, okay? You can buy cartoline, which is the plural for postcards, in tabacchi, or sometimes, of course, in souvenir shops, but sometimes even at edicola or giornalaio, which is the newspapers. When you address your friend in Italian, it's nice to start with caro and then you put the name. Like in a letter, cara Desi, let's assume you're writing a postcard to me, cara Desi. If you don't want to put the name, maybe you can just write cara amica or amico. Or if you find this a bit formal, just go with ciao. Ciao Desi, comma. Ciao amico, comma. Virgola. Ciao, Desi. Come stai? Of course, you know that they're not gonna answer to the postcard, but still it's nice, like an opening to ask, how are you doing? Come stai? Or come state? If you are referring to the whole family. But if you don't wanna touch anything personal, just skip it and go on. I'd suggest, because that's what we usually write, to give a hint about what you're doing, or how's the weather, or where you are. For example, sono nel mio hotel a Roma. Sono nel mio hotel a Roma. I'm at my hotel in Rome. Non ci posso credere. Non ci posso ancora credere. I still can't believe it. Still, ancora, you can leave it or put it in. Non ci posso credere. I can't believe it. That you're finally in Rome, right? Qua Fa molto caldo. Talking about the weather is always a safe phrase because it can't go wrong. So just put qua fa molto caldo. Qua fa molto caldo. Here is very hot. Or qua fa molto freddo. Qua fa molto freddo. Here is very cold. If you like to write a bit more, maybe you can say what you visited or what you ate that day. For example, Oggi abbiamo visitato il Colosseo. Today we visited the Colosseum. Era enorme. È enorme. È enorme. It's huge. Or oggi ho mangiato la carbonara. Today I ate carbonara. Oggi ho mangiato la carbonara. Era fantastica. It was amazing. Era fantastica. As you know, a postcard has to be short, it's not a letter. So for closure, I'd suggest something like Mi diverto molto. Mi diverto molto. I'm having a lot of fun. Ma non vedo l'ora di vederti. Or vedervi. But I can't wait to see you. Ma non vedo l'ora di vederti. And maybe, or instead of vederti, so to see you, non vedo l'ora di raccontarti tutto. I can't wait to tell you everything. Non vedo l'ora di raccontarti 
to tell you tutto, everything. Something else that you can use as a closing is saluti, saluti. So instead of one greeting, un saluto, it's just greetings, saluti, but the meaning is the same, saluti da Roma, or saluti da, I can't say my name because I'm writing to myself, so <laughs> saluti da Marco, greetings from Marco, or un bacio, a kiss, it's not too much, I mean for Italians it's fine, just write baci, like kisses, which is just a greeting as you know, or un abbraccio, a hug, or if you want to keep it more formal, just write ci vediamo presto, I see you soon, we'll meet soon, a presto, a presto, see you soon, a presto. Don't forget to sign it with your name, on the right you have the address, l'indirizzo, while on the left it's your message, right? Also, don't forget to ask for an international stamp, so francobollo internazionale, or per l'estero, per l'estero, for other countries. And you're done. Just keep enjoying your trip, and if you want to learn more useful Italian, just remember to click the link in the description, download our PDF files, and learn how to speak everyday Italian language. I hope this was useful and that you will actually have the chance to write a postcard from Italy. We'll be waiting for you. Thank you for watching and thank you for liking and subscribing. I know you are doing that. Please do that. And I'll see you soon. Ci vediamo presto. Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is how to match your routine to language learning. If you're having a hard time sticking with language learning, then this episode is for you. You'll learn one, how to map your routine and set your schedule, two, how to choose the learning medium that's right for you, and three, the language tools you'll want for your learning style. If you're having a hard time sticking with language learning, you'll find out how to fix it now. Let's jump into the first part. One, how to map your routine and set your schedule. First, here's a quick question for you. Which of these would you rather have? A, the world's most comprehensive language learning resources, but a weak study routine, or B, a strong study routine and average resources. Leave your answer in the comments. But there is a correct answer here. You want a strong study routine. Why? You can have the best app or textbook in the world, but if you don't use it because you don't have a learning routine or a habit, you won't learn anything. If you have a strong routine and work ethic and just a dictionary and internet access, you'll learn more than someone with the best program and no routine. The point is, we are creatures of routines and habits, and our habits can be used for good or bad. They make us or break us. For example, if you have a bad habit, like going to bed at 4 a.m., you'll always feel tired when you wake up for work or school in the morning. If you have a good habit, like exercising regularly, you'll have energy and good health. Once we have a routine, we tend to stick to it. If it's a bad routine, it can do a lot of damage. But if it's a good routine, it can help us enjoy incredible results. We can also use routines to our advantage by applying them to work toward our goals, like language learning. How do you create a strong language learning routine? Here's one way to do it. First, write down your current daily schedule. For example, 7 a.m. I wake up, 8 a.m. I leave the house, 8.20 to 8.50 I'm on the train, 9.10 a.m. I arrive at work, 1 p.m. I go to lunch, and so on. Write out your daily schedule for the whole week. Make it detailed. If you write out your schedule, you can see your existing daily routine. You can see where you can fit language learning into your existing routine, the routine that you're used to, instead of trying to create a new routine. Why does this matter? For example, some people will look at their schedule and see that they wake up at 8 a.m. They think that if they wake up at 7 a.m., they can have an extra hour for language learning. But for many of us, that approach usually doesn't work because it's not something we're used to. You're trying to wake up early so you can learn a language. You're trying to implement two brand new routines that you're not used to. For many people, this results in failure. 
Even if you do wake up at 7 a.m., will you get out of bed immediately and jump straight to learning every day? Or will you lose motivation after a few days because you miss that hour of sleep? So map out your weekly schedule. Once you understand where your time goes, find an existing part of your routine that you can fit language learning into. For example, if you take the train in the morning, you can use that existing routine and learn some language during that time. If you always eat lunch at 1 p.m., watch a video lesson during your break. If you always cook at 8 p.m., play some audio lessons in the background. If at first you have to start with multitasking, it's better than nothing. You can at least get used to being exposed to the language while you work on dedicating more time and attention to it. Now, let's jump into part two. Two, how to choose the learning medium that's right for you. Before you begin learning, it's important to understand what kind of learner you are. Are you a visual learner or do you learn by reading? There's something called the VARC model and it's an acronym for four learning styles, visual, auditory or listening, reading, writing, and kinesthetic, meaning hands-on or actual practice and trial and error. You need to understand what kind of learning resources are best for you. So, how do you determine what kind of learner you are? This depends on you. Do you like watching videos, listening, reading, or writing? Or do you prefer more hands-on practice? There's no wrong answer. It depends on what kind of learner you are and what you like. Also, think about your past language study experience. Did you remember vocabulary words better when you read them from a book? Or was listening to a podcast more helpful for you? How do you usually remember information best? This helps you choose the learning medium or study tools that are right for you. We'll talk more about this in a few minutes. For now, determine what kind of learner you are. Leave us a comment and let us know. The last thing you need to keep in mind is your study ratio. Your study ratio is how much time you spend absorbing information, input, and how much time you spend producing language, output. What you want to strive for is about 50% input and 50% practice or production, producing that language. So, if you read for 30 minutes, then you want to practice for 30 minutes. You can't just consume, you must practice. Otherwise, it's not going to stick as fast. All right, we've covered routines and learning types. Let's move on to part three. Three, the language tools you'll want for your learning style. In this last part, we're going to cover all the resources that you can take advantage of based on your learning style. But remember, if you're a visual learner, that doesn't mean you should shun resources that don't fit that style. Sometimes it's not practical to watch a video. For example, if you're driving, audio is a much better choice. So let's jump in. If you're a visual learner, take advantage of our video lessons in the lesson library. We have them across all levels, from absolute beginner to advanced. These will be your main source of learning. Use the vocab slideshows. You'll find these on every lesson page and vocab list. The slideshows make it super easy to learn and review words. Just press play and watch. You can put it on a loop and watch for as long as you want. Next, if you're an auditory learner, then take advantage of our audio lessons. You can also use dialogue audio tracks. These give you just the conversation from that lesson, and you can use these tracks to immerse yourself in conversations. Next, if you prefer reading and writing, we include lesson notes and transcripts for every audio and video lesson. So if you're taking a lesson, read along. The lesson notes include extra grammar explanations, vocab lists, and cultural insights that are not available in the lesson. You can also check out our extensive reading books in the lesson library. These are simple one line per page books that will build you into a confident reader. If you prefer writing, you can copy out the lesson dialogue into your notebook. You can leave comments on our lessons with sample sentences. You can keep a daily journal in your target language. Plus, you can send messages to your Premium Plus teacher and practice writing. They'll correct your mistakes, tell you how to express yourself in a natural way, and help you improve fast. And finally, if you're a kinesthetic learner and prefer hands-on experience and trial and error, definitely use our Premium Plus teachers and practice with them. You can do that via the My Teacher Messenger on the site or in the app. Use our spaced repetition flashcards. These cards quiz you on words and phrases and help you master them fast. They sort the words for you and quiz you accordingly. So if you don't know a word, you'll keep seeing it over and over until you get it right. And if you do know it, you'll see it again in a few days. It'll pop up every now and then just to refresh your memory. Also, take advantage of our lesson quizzes. You'll find these in every audio lesson, and these test you on the words and phrases you learned in the lessons. You can also practice speaking with our voice recorder. 
You'll find this inside the dialogue tool. You can record yourself and compare with native speakers. You can keep practicing until you can say the lesson dialogue at a native level. There are tools for every learning style. So, today you learned, one, how to map your routine and set your schedule, two, how to choose the learning medium that's right for you, and three, the language tools you'll want for your learning style. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about the secret to speaking more of your target language. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. Starting easy with language learning is sometimes the best way to get into a new language. But before you feel guilty about wanting to learn the easy way, don't worry. It's fine to start the easy way. You wouldn't expect to lift 200 pounds on your first day at the gym, right? And language is no different. Start easy so you can build up to tackling greater challenges later. In this video, we'll explore seven easy ways to learn a language. The reason it's okay to start easy is the same as the reason you should start easy in the gym. You just can't expect to lift 200 pounds on day one. You start with five pounds, then you move up to 10, 15, 20. And language is the same way. Learn a few phrases today, a basic conversation tomorrow. In a few weeks, you'll be able to speak for up to three minutes in your target language. Then you'll reach five, then 10, then 20 minutes. Success comes step by step, little by little. So it's important to make things that are easy to do and easy to continue part of your routine. If you try to study for two hours a day with nothing but a big textbook, you may overwhelm yourself, get discouraged, and get tired. You might not stick with it because it's too hard to do. Things that are easy to do are easy to continue. So here are some resources to help you learn language the easy way. Number one, take audio and video lessons. Listening to audio and watching video lessons is an easy way to consume language. Most of our lessons are five minutes on average, so you don't have to spend too much time at the computer. You can even learn on our app while you're commuting, working around the house, or out on a walk. Number two, take lessons with Alexa. If you own an Amazon Echo, Dot, or Show, or are planning to get one, you'll want to make sure to download some apps to help you learn your target language. Take a look through the Amazon Skill Store. You can listen to lessons and other audio materials actively or passively, whenever the time is right for you. Number three, download the lesson dialogues and immerse yourself. With every audio lesson, you get a dialogue track, just the lesson conversation. These are just five to 20 seconds long. When you finish a lesson, download the track. Make a playlist of all of them. Then play them and immerse yourself in the language. Number four, the word of the day. This will take you a minute or less. Sign up for our free word of the day email lessons. It'll be a small boost to your vocabulary every day. Number five, vocab slideshows. You can access vocabulary slideshows on any audio lesson or vocab list. Just press play and watch the slideshow. That's it. This is a fast and easy way to review words from a lesson. You can even put the slideshow on loop to review as much as you want. Number six, the Daily Dose of Language app. This app is for the iPhone, iPad, and Android. With this bonus app, you'll get daily mini lessons covering phrases, grammar, culture, holidays, slang, and more. Every day is something new. Plus, these lessons will take you just a minute or two to complete. Number seven, print out our lessons as physical study material. You might be wondering why you should bother to print anything if all the lesson content is already online. But if you have the material sitting right in front of you, it's a lot easier to just glance through and start learning. With our Word Bank study tool, you can create your own word and phrase lists and print them out. Reviewing takes just a few minutes. You can also print out the lesson notes that come with every audio and video lesson. You'll also find our extensive reading books, which will help you to read faster. You'll find these in the lesson library. What's your reason for learning a language? Is it a personal goal, a hobby, or do you have dreams of living in a country where it's spoken? In this video, you'll discover 10 reasons people learn languages. You'll also learn why knowing and sharing your reason is important to succeeding in your learning.
What's your reason for learning a language? Whatever your reason is, whether big or small, knowing it and talking about it is important. More often than not, your reason for learning a language is directly related to your long-term goal for the language. Your reason for learning might be, I want to live in the country where the language is spoken, or I want to understand the culture, movies, and music. But it can also be something simple, like I'm just interested in it. The point is, if you know your reason, you'll always remember what got you started in the first place. As a result, you'll maintain your motivation and continue your studies. But what about sharing your reason with others? This doesn't mean bragging about your goals and saying things like, I'll be fluent in 10 months. Rather, I'm learning because and sharing something specific to you. Real reasons. When you talk about your reason for learning with others, you remind yourself indirectly. And the more you think about it, the more likely you are to do it. Plus, you set an expectation. By sharing your goals and your reasons for learning, your friends see you as someone who's actively learning a language, and that's another powerful motivator. Also, talking about it gives you confidence, the knowledge that you can and will learn the language. A lot of people think they can't learn a language. They think they don't have the time for it or the talent for it. In reality, you just need to start. By sharing your reason, you can convince yourself that you can do it. So, what's your reason for learning? Leave a comment and tell us why you started learning a new language. So, why are other language learners studying? We asked. Here are the top 10 reasons for learning a language. Number one, I love the culture and the people who speak the language. This is a popular answer, especially among our learners studying Japanese and Korean. Number two, I want to understand songs, movies, and TV shows. Songs, movies, and TV shows are great ways to immerse yourself in the language. If you're spending your time learning and immersing yourself, you're going to learn faster. Number three, it's a beautiful language. Sometimes people simply love the way the language sounds. This is a simple answer, but even this can keep you motivated if your interest in the language is genuine. Number four, my family comes from a place where the language is spoken. Of course, people want to be able to connect to their family and the people they love. Speaking of... Number five, I want to speak to my partner's family in their language. This can be a great way to connect with people and learn more about them, especially if they're new family. Number six, I'm learning the language to impress someone. Maybe you want to show off to someone special, or maybe surprise a grandparent with a card in their native language. There are a variety of situations in which using another language can show someone you care. Number seven, I love traveling. Knowing the local language when you travel will help you find new places and make new connections. It can only make your travel experience better. Number eight, I live or want to live in a country that speaks the language. It's a lot of people's dream to live overseas and experience the culture they love. Or maybe they need to move for work or family reasons. Learning the local language is extremely important if you're going to live in a different country. Number nine, I just love learning languages. What's great about this is if you've learned one language, it's easier to learn another because you learn how to learn a language, right? If you learn one, you develop certain habits and approaches that work for you. You can use this to master another. Number 10, it's just a personal goal. We hear this a lot, especially from learners that stopped, took a break, and came back. If you have a goal in mind, something you wanted to do but never did, you want to come back to it and get it done. Our results show that most people learn for love, for family, to travel, or for self-improvement. So why are you learning? Leave us a comment right now and let us know. Did you have a language teacher that inspired you? Maybe it wasn't a teacher, but a partner or another person someone that motivated you to learn. You wanted to reward their investment in you by doing well. When learning a new language, having encouragement and the help of a good teacher can be hugely important to succeeding in your studies. In this video, we'll look at the power of a good teacher. Teachers can have a powerful impact on you, so let's look at how great teachers help you during your language learning journey. Number one, a good teacher can push you to improve your speaking. Working on building your conversation skills can be tough. Whether you're practicing a one-minute conversation or a 10-minute conversation, having a good teacher to practice with is key. You can prepare for your conversations by creating an outline of things to cover on paper. Then as you talk, you can follow along with the topics you've prepared. 
These topics can include basic things like greetings, asking about the other person, or just catching up. Because all of the things you're going to talk about have been prepared before you begin the conversation, you can move down the list and practice different stages of conversation. Something as simple as greeting someone and catching up with them can be two to three minutes of talking. Having a good teacher to help you make this outline and go through it with you can really improve your speaking. A good teacher will also be able to handle going off script too. When a conversation goes outside the originally planned outline, a good teacher can react smoothly and keep the conversation going. If you want to make a joke or change the subject, the teacher can follow along. They can react and continue the conversation with you easily. If a teacher shuts down a student when they're trying something new, it can really hurt the student's motivation and enthusiasm. But the right teacher can motivate you to get better, even if your speaking isn't always perfect. The key is finding someone who can take a student's new skills and encourage them, even if they're not correct 100% of the time. Number two, how you can learn faster with outside help. After studying on your own for some time, introducing outside support can be a game changer for your long-term motivation. It can push you to reach new limits and work harder than ever. It can be a teacher, a tutor, a family member, a friend, or someone you look up to. But it has to be someone that inspires and energizes you. Of course, finding people like this is easier said than done. So you might want to take a few trial lessons with a few teachers to find the one you're the best fit with. If you're a Premium Plus user, take advantage of your Premium Plus teachers. They will hold you accountable, send you assignments, and give you feedback to help you perfect your language skills. It's also important to find a teacher whose lessons you enjoy. Sometimes people stick with lessons just because they like the instructor. There are so many types of teachers. If you can find instructors you gravitate towards, you may find you'll want to learn more just because of who they are. Make sure to check out our lesson library. There are a ton of classes and teachers to choose from in the absolute beginner, beginner, and intermediate levels. If you hear someone you like, you'll be more likely to stick with their lessons, and you'll learn better. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description.